Hi, my name is Clarence from St. Paul, Minnesota, and you're watching TJV on YouTube. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Enjoy. Good morning there. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Raining over there too. Is it raining back here too? I have a nightmare of a load behind me. <laughs> it's actually a really good load. It just took four hours to tie down yesterday. It, uh, a lot of little pieces, a lot of little pieces. I'm gonna shoot you back to yesterday's videos here as we were leaving in just a second. And then I'll meet you back here. I'm gonna show you the load after that. But I didn't have time for anything. First of all, we got a late start yesterday. And then I realized when I got there, oh, this is gonna take a little while longer than I expected. I was done tying down and tarping. We had to tarp some of it, some of it, not all of it, some of it. I was done at like 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> so we drove till five in the morning, central time, I think. Sometime around 4 a.m. here. I'm in, uh, I'm in Whitewood, Saskatchewan right now, in Old Blue. And obviously it's very difficult to make a vlog when it's two in the morning and you're trying to get as far as you can. And we're at it again. Trip number two in Old Blue. It's gonna be a good one. Just bobtailing right now. My trailer is waiting for me preloaded uh, in a town in south central Manitoba, uh, well, just sort of southwest of Winnipeg. A little town called Bronkild, Manitoba. I gotta grab that and that's taking us west towards Alberta. Part of it I'm gonna have to tarp from what I heard. That's okay, that's what I'm here for. We'll get hooked up onto that and we'll see how far we can get tonight yet. I'm, I w I'd like to get about to Balgoni, the Flying J there. Have a nice shower then. We'll see. All right, I haven't quite hooked up yet. This is the load. That is some complex stuff. Now I was told, oh wow, all that sort of just piled in there like that, okay. I was told that something in here needs to be tarped. I'm guessing it's this. Needs to be tarped. Wow. Or is it just this? No, just these. These need to be tarped. Yeah, because it had the red tape on it. It looks like that's like the same as all this. But this they just left outside. I was told just the back part I'll need to tarp. Okay, that would be that. This is gonna be pretty hard to tie down. Not gonna lie. There's this here. This is just loose on there. Okay. Um uh, okay. Uh-huh. 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 Well, that's what I'm here for, right? I'm the professional. I'm the one who's supposed to know what I'm doing, so we'll figure it out. Right? We'll figure it out. None of this has to be tarp, so that's good. It's just that back piece. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. It's gonna be a little difficult just to tarp the back part without tarping the front part too. We're headed to Alberta. Beautiful Alberta, north of Edmonton. So it's a longer trip. It was about 1,900 kilometers or like 1,300 miles or 1,100, 1,200 miles. Can't do that. Okay. Let's see, this is our route. Okay, let's uh, zoom out here. We're going to a small town called Tangent. And then we have a second drop in a town called Guy or Guy, but it's spelled Guy, but they say it is Guy, I think. I'm not from there, I don't know. Let me show you the load. Come with me. One second, Karen. Busy. Pushing. Here's old blue. 
getting a natural bath. Always raining. And there's the load. Wait till you see the other side. Got everything tied down. It's all tight and secure. I stopped several times on the way here last night to make sure. Got corner protectors on everything. Wonderful, wonderful. And then I had to tarp this last little piece for some reason. Obviously, because it's the most important part. That doesn't mean the rest of the load isn't important. Don't make him feel that way. He's just importanter. Got my tarps, my extra tarps up there. This all tarped down. And here we go on this side. And old blue is all warmed up and ready to go. So let's get going. Whitewood, Saskatchewan. Got another 1,500 kilometers to go yet. That's uh, a ways in miles. <laughs> Are you ready to rock and roll, Diesel? You look ready. I'm ready, my boy. Ready, man. Come on, Diesel. Come here. Come here. Let's rock and roll. You want to stay back there? Okay, you stay back there. I don't blame you. You get the whole bed to yourself. All right, lights are on. Truck is in gear. Rain is falling down. Everything is normal. It's just uh oh, I get that little tug there. Very good, very good. Trailer is attached, guaranteed for sure now. Off we go, Diesel. Another adventure. These loads definitely aren't my favorite when there's so many little pieces and it's like tin or aluminum too. I think it's tin and it bends very easy. You gotta be very careful with it. This spring has been just exceptionally wet. It's been very moist on the prairies. Just rain, rain, rain. That's all we seem to see. I mean, last year, the last few years, we've been in a drought, right? So I guess this is good. I don't know what's good anymore. Too much water is not good. Not enough water, not good. Just enough water. That's fishy, not good. What's going on? I was rolling around Regina, Saskatchewan. About to head up the 11 North towards Saskatchewan. Or Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Well, what do they got here? Traffic lights? Saskatchewan, what you doing to me? You and your funny construction habits. <laughs> Come on. Hold on, Karen. Hold on. I got to deal with Saskatchewan here first. Look at this. I can make this car disappear. Just about. I don't want to get too close and scare him, but... <laughs> I could get close enough to him, you wouldn't even be able, to, be able to tell there was a Honda Civic there. Okay, so you turn left, you go against traffic, you go through opposing traffic, and you go up the wrong ramp, onto the wrong side of the highway, and then they shoot you over to the right side, and then you're off to the races. That's a green light, you're my witness. Excuse me. Hot freight coming through. Excuse me. Fines triple in Saskatchewan. In Manitoba, we only double the fine in construction zones. We're not quite as serious as Saskatchewan about our construction zone speed limits. <laughs> Saskatchewan, they mean business. And the fines up here in Canada, when you get a fine from like the police, you get pulled over for something, our fines are astronomical immediately. Immediately. I hear people in the States getting a speeding ticket and it's like, well, it was like 80 bucks. What were you doing, half a mile an hour over? Up here, it's like they start at like $400. There we go, they spit you onto the right side of the road and you have all the freedom to give her all the way to Saskatchewan. Wonderful. I've been stopping to check my straps much more often than usual with this load. I really, uh, they make me a little nervous, all of this real, like, really light tin stuff. Like I was telling you before, you gotta be very careful not to bend it. So you can't tie it down too tight. But you also have to realize it's very light and the wind will just catch it and blow it right off the trailer if you don't tie it down tight enough. 
So you gotta find the sweet spot. But if you go too far, you can't go back. All right, you can't bend stuff back. <laughs> How do you know you, I don't know. You just sort of gotta do your best. After doing it, I guess, after hauling these kind of loads multiple times, you sort of, sort of get it, I guess, but been doing this, uh, I'm in my 16th year of trucking, and i uh, tell you what, it still makes me a little nervous when I'm hauling this kind of freight. I don't like it. I'll do it, it doesn't mean I gotta like it. Diesel! We made it to Saskatoon. Saskatchewan. You remember this place? This is where your brother had his surgery. Little wiener had spinal surgery here. You remember we went to the dog park? It was just around here somewhere. Was it was behind us? Is it up here? I think it's just up here. Saskatoon has like the best dog park. Just massive. It's a huge park, all fenced in. And it's uh, it's so big you can't really find the fence. <laughs> dogs just have all the room in the world to roam around and play with other dogs. We were really impressed. If you ever come to Saskatoon, check out their dog park. I forget what it's called, but it's right along Circle Drive here. Just on the east side of Saskatoon. I don't know, some Saskatooner in my comment will probably tell you what the name of the dog park is in the comment section. But it is the best one I have ever been to. I think Diesel agrees, right Diesel? Yes sir, it was very nice. Very nice, I remember it well. Yeah. I think it's just up here. Yeah, so it's past Preston Avenue, University of Saskatchewan campus, because that's where the vet is. Uh, it's one of the most advanced veterinary schools and uh, clinics in the country. It's in Saskatoon here. We're just getting to uh, Lloyd Minster, Saskatchewan and Alberta. It's the same town both sides of the border. Haven't been here in a while. Just at the scale, right before town. Scale's closed, so I figured it was safe to come in. I'm gonna go check on my load, and then we're gonna walk diesel. And then, we're gonna keep going. It's 10.30 at night here right now. A few other trucks here already. This load is just chaos. <laughs> it's all tied down tight though. Nothing's moved. I know it's probably kind of hard to see because YouTube likes to darken everything for you. But there's the scale house right there. Having fun. It's been a good trip. A little bit rushed. And so far my experience with Old Blue has been the same. It's been running, I don't want to jinx it, but it's been running very smooth. It's been doing really well. Let's knock on wood. Let's uh, keep uh, hoping for the best. You know, it's an older truck, but it's been very well maintained. So it doesn't feel like that old of a truck. Plus the engine is pretty new. Uh, only about 380,000 miles on the engine, uh, 600,000 kilometers, which, you know, isn't brand, brand new. But that's not bad. That's, that's, that's pretty good. These engines will go, oh, some say a million kilometers, some say two million. I'm going to go right in the middle and say, I can probably expect on this engine, if I treat it right and maintain it well, I can probably expect to get one and a half million kilometers out of it before I'd need to rebuild it again. So, a little less than a million kilometers. I do about 200,000 kilometers a year, let's say, doing this. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It's about five years that I have. About every five years is when you, one, oh, one, five years. And we don't know what the future holds. This, that's just a rough guesstimate. That's what I'm hoping for. That would be nice. You know, I want to keep this truck running. Of course, I want to keep the engine uh, top of the line and nicely, nicely tuned so that it's the longevity lasts of the, the longevity of the engine uh, lasts into 
the decade to come. I'd love to have this truck running another 10 years, maybe more. more. I don't really like all the new trucks. I don't like all the all the new things that every new little thing they put into them is another thing to go wrong. And I don't want to, I'm not an engineer, so I don't want to tell them how to do their jobs. They're doing a great job. All these new technologies coming out, they're really cool, really fascinating, and a lot of brain power went into them. I could never think of that. You know, all these new little technologies that they add in there. In my own opinion, though, as a driver who drives these trucks every day, they're over engineered. You guys just need to calm down. Okay, stop trying to outdo each other. They're already good. Don't mess with it if it's if it's good. <laughs> stop adding things to it. Because the more you add to it, the more things go wrong on our end when we have the truck. And you get all the awards and all of the, you know, the pats on the back for creating new technologies and implementing new things and adding this here and adding that there. Yeah, you go home, you feel good about yourself and you get a massive paycheck. And then we get the truck that you engineered, that you over-engineered. I don't want to make this sound like I'm pointing at any fingers either. I should just say we get the truck that was over engineered by whoever, you know, the teams that, that do this stuff. It's no one in specific, really. I don't know who did it. But it comes down to the line to us, the guys who actually run these trucks, who actually pay to maintain them, They're the ones who need to keep them running to feed their families. And we're running into big problems because there's too many things on here now that can go wrong. And that's why I went with an older truck. You know, the older the truck, it seems, the less things that there that there are that could go wrong. But you know, that could that could come back to bite me too. You know, old truck's an old truck. You need to fix them. And when they break, you gotta fix them. And uh, you know, buying a truck's a risk. This truck, buying this truck was a risk. It was a gamble. Uh, it was an educated gamble though. Uh, by that I mean it was an educated guess. It was an estimate, uh, uh, a calculated choice. I didn't just jump into it. I've been thinking about it for a while. And uh, I did a lot of research into this specific truck too. Uh, and like I said, the owner who had it before me, it was a great guy. I didn't know him before this transaction, but now I know him. Fantastic guy, fantastic guy. Really glad I bought a truck off of him and that I can continue his tradition of maintenance uh, that he had on there and that he can feel comfortable knowing that he's giving his, his baby to someone who will treat it just as good. Maybe better, I don't know. I don't know if I could treat it better than him. <laughs> he did a really good job, but at least I could, at par. Same same, same thing, right? Uh, so I felt good about it. I had a good gut feeling about it. I felt good in my heart and in my soul about it. And uh, I went for it, I dove in. See, the, the thing about uh, taking risks in life is eventually you just have to jump in the deep end and, and swim, learn to swim. The only advice I can give you though, is before you jump into the deep end of the pool, just make sure that there's water in the pool. Okay, that's what I mean by making calculated decisions. Do your research, figure things out. You got some dust on you, excuse me. It's probably been there the whole time. But figure things out first. Make sure that when you jump in the deep end, there's actually water in the pool. Because if you jump into the deep end and there's no water in the pool, you're gonna hit the bottom and it's gonna hurt. You're gonna hit the bottom and smack dab and you're gonna you're gonna turn into a little pancake. It's gonna be a big mess. And now you're at the deep end of the pool and there's no ladder to get you out. How do you get out of a pool? And then you realize it's all deep end. There's no way, now you're stuck in this empty hole in the ground, right? First, make sure there's water in the pool. Then you jump in the deep end and you learn, and you, and you tread water, you swim. And eventually you start doing laps, all right? That's my analogy for tonight. I'm feeling, feeling quite an, 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 an analogetical. And uh, did it make sense? <laughs> I don't know. It's late. I need to get trucking. We've passed midnight. I've gotten my extra time on the clock there. You good to go, Diesel? You just had a late supper. We're on such a messed up schedule right now. Let's get out of here.
some people ask if I uh, have asked me if I float the gears or if I clutch. To be honest with you, I don't even know anybody who uses the clutch except to start. <laughs> so no, I don't. I only use the clutch to get going. There is a stop sign for me over there. Casino. Found a parking spot. Sun's starting to come up. Time to go to bed. Though we're pretty far north right now. The sun doesn't really go down. <laughs> it's just always up. It's almost as dark as it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I get back to where the truck parking is? Do I gotta go around the back of the store or what? I'm guessing so. I never even knew this truck stop was here. This might be a new one. Gas here is a dollar eighty-six per liter. I hate to say it, but that's cheap juice. 209 in Manitoba. It's about, uh, about five bucks a gallon American. Maybe a little more, 550. 185 here is probably around, uh, it's probably all around five when you do the conversions. Find some park here. There's a bit of a drop off here. I'm glad I saw that. Let's slow down. Uh, there it is. Oh, it wasn't so bad. Could have parked there, but now I want to go park further in the back by myself. I got to walk diesel, so I like to be on my own in the back. Definitely ready to lay my head down, that's for sure. And we'll unload this freight first thing tomorrow. Right, Diesel? <laughs> Look at this, we'll park back here all by ourselves. take him out and go to bed thanks for hanging out with me today is mostly just road footage uh head cam hope you guys like that it's been a rush kind of day so i did what i could now i gotta rush to bed and rush to sleep because in the morning i gotta rush to the customer and then hopefully we can take it easy on the way back ah my voice is even like going all over the place i'm tired ah uh, but it will be on the way home so of course it's gonna be rushed all right diesel We'll say anything yet? No? No, he's good. He's good. All right, everybody. We'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow for the delivery. I got two stops. <laughs>